In this problem, we're told a rotating merry-go-round makes one complete revolution in four seconds. A, what is the linear speed of the child seated 1.2 meters from the center? And B, what is her acceleration? Give components. So before we start this problem, let's go ahead and draw what's going on here. So imagine this right here is going to be our merry-go-round, right? Imagine this is a circle, but uh, we know it's going to be doing one revolution in four seconds. And so the child is going to be seated 1.2 meters from the center. And so let's go ahead and draw that. So imagine they're on the outside here. So this is 1.2 meters. And so it's going to be rotating around like this at some angular velocity omega, right? And it's going to have some velocity, some linear velocity or linear speed v. So that's going to be that. Let's write down our given now. So given, so what are we told? So we know it's going to make one complete revolution every four seconds. So I'm going to say t equals four seconds, and you'll see why in a second. But essentially, this is going to be the time it takes to go around the circle, or the time it takes it to rotate once. So that's that. And then we also know the radius. So they tell us it's going to be 1.2 meters from the center. So our radius is 1.2 meters. So that's going to be that. So now that's that's labeled, let's start with A. So A is going to be, what is the linear speed of the child? Uh, that's what we're trying to find. So in order to solve this linear speed, you need to know this formula. So V, or the linear speed, is equal to the radius times omega. And so omega is this w here. Essentially what this is, it's the angular velocity. So we know what the radius is, right? So we know the radius is 1.2 meters, but we don't know omega yet. So we need to solve for the angular velocity. And what angular velocity is, it's the change in uh, theta over the change in time, right? So essentially it's just the speed at this rotates. You can imagine like normal velocity, but instead it's just the speed of this rotating. So how do we find that? So the change in omega, or the change in theta, what I want you to think about, right? So they tell us it takes four seconds for it to do one rotation, right? So one rotation is going to be four seconds. But what is the distance of one rotation? So one rotation is going to be two pi radians, right? You know it's going to take uh, two pi to go around this. So essentially, the change in our angle theta is two pi radians, and the distance it's take is, uh, or this time is going to take is four seconds. So if you go ahead and do this, the, this is just going to become one half. So it's just pi over two. So pi over two, uh, and this is going to be in radians per second, right? Because we had radians on top, so radians per second. So this is going to be our angular velocity. So it's going to be the angular velocity, the speed at which this spins, essentially. So this is going to be our w, right? So we have that, and now we can just plug it in. So our linear speed is going to be equal to 1.2 times pi over two. So if you go ahead and do this, uh, 1.2 times uh, pi over 2, you're going to get 1.88. So that's going to be 1.88. Uh, I'm just going to round to 1.9. And so the units for this is going to be meters per second, right? So because we have seconds, but when they say radians, they're really talking about meters, right? And because keep in mind, uh, the radius or the radius is in meters. So this is 1.2 meters. This is seconds. So that's meters over second. You can imagine radians is not really having any units. It's just what we say. But really, this is just uh, meters over seconds. So 1.9 meters per second, that's going to be the linear speed or your answer to A. So this is A. Let's move on to B now. So B is going to be, what is her acceleration? And so when they're talking about acceleration, essentially what they want us to find is the centripetal acceleration. And so in order to solve this, uh, there's some form. Uh, there's a formula you should know. So a sub r, which is your radial acceleration or your centripetal acceleration, it's equal to omega squared times r. So your angular velocity squared times the radius. And so keep in mind, we do know both of these. So all we got to do is just uh, solve. So let's go ahead and do that. So a sub r is going to be equal to dub, uh, omega, which is angular velocity. Uh, squared, which we know what it is, right? We calculate it in for the first part. So pi over 2 squared, and then go ahead and multiply that by the radius. And we know the radius, 1.2 meters. So go ahead and do that. You're going to get, uh, plug it in your calculator, 2.96. So 2.96, uh, I'm going to round to 3. So this is just about 3. And then keep in mind this is meters, this is seconds. Right, but we're squaring it, so this is seconds squared, and then on top radians, it's like unitless. Think about it that way. So really, we just have meters over seconds squared, right? So just like normal acceleration, so three meters per.
per second squared. So uh, three meters per second squared, you can specify the direction. So this is going to be towards the center, right? Because it's centripetal uh, acceleration. So towards the center. So three meters per second is going to be your answer to B. Uh, and then this right here is your answer to A, 1.9 meters per second. And so yeah, hopefully you found this useful.